Welcome to Mastering Mel for Maya, a free companion to my popular Python for Maya course linked in the video description below. In part two of this video series, we'll be going over how to see what commands Maya is running while you work so that you can learn by doing. We'll also learn how to look up documentation and modify Maya's commands to do exactly what we want. Let's examine the cube that we just created. How would we find out what to run? Well, let's start by doing what we want manually. If you want to script something in Mel, the best way to start is by doing it manually first and see what happens. So first, let's open the script editor so that we can see the commands that Maya is running. We'll create a cube by going to Create, Polygon Primitives, and we'll click on Cube. And you can see that Maya ran the polycube command with some flags to tell it what size to create it with. Let's copy this and paste it down here. Next, let's create a sphere. So we'll go to Create, Polygon Primitives, Sphere. And again, you can see the command that Maya ran. So let's copy this and paste it down here again. And now I'm going to move my sphere out of the way. And you can see that Maya issues a move command and tells it to move to these units. Perfect. I'm going to copy this as well. And then finally, I'm going to select the cube. Again, Maya issues a select command. So I can copy this and then I can paste it here. Notice that each line ends with a semicolon. This is how we tell Mel that the line has ended because a single command can actually take multiple lines of code. Let's create a new scene and run this code. So if I click on the double arrows, you can see that it creates our polycube, creates our sphere, then it moves our sphere, and then it selects the pcube1, which is the name of our polycube. Therefore, we know that we can save these steps down and rerun them when we want, and it's faster than doing it manually with a mouse and keyboard. This ran almost instantly, whereas doing it manually took a little while. But what if we want to customize the commands or understand what these other things mean after the command? Well, let's look up the documentation. We can right-click on any of the commands, in this case I highlighted in blue, and we can go to command documentation. You can also get here by going to help, Maya scripting reference, Mel command reference. And this opens up your web browser and shows you all the commands that Maya has available. Let's look up the polycube command. So I'm going to click on P and I'm going to find polycube, which is right here. On this page, we can read a description of the command we can see the cube command creates a new polygon cube. We can see what it returns, which is a value it gives back to us. In this case, it gives us the object name and the node name used to create it. And it tells us all the parameters that it takes. Notice that each of these parameters has a long name and a short name, and it tells us the argument types that it takes. It also describes what this argument does. Finally, at the bottom of the page, it gives us an example of how to use the command with a little bit of documentation in the form of comments. Sometimes though, you don't always want to open a web browser to look up help, and the script editor has a few features to that end. You can view help manually by running help on your command. So let's go back to Maya, and I'm going to run help on the polycube command. So I'll say help polycube, and when I run this, it gives us all the parameters that the cube takes. You can also view help by going to command, and you can say show quick help. And whenever I select a command, I can right click and go to quick help, and it'll show me all the parameters right here. Additionally, I can go to command, and I can say show tooltip help, in which case, if I was to write polycube, in the tooltip, it gives me all the parameters for this command. To wrap up this video, let's modify this polycube command we have here. 
we can see that the polycube command is run with the W, which stands for width, and it's given a width of 1. Let's set it to a width of 14. And let's set the H for height to 11 and the depth to 12. Again, you can see all these parameters are listed here. The short form, D, for the long form, depth. If I create a new scene and I run my code, you can see that I have a cube that if I click on the polycube here, you can see that it has a width of 14, a height of 11, and a depth of 12, just like we told it to. And if we've already created this cube and we want to change some of these attributes, we can use the setAdder command. So this cube is called pcube1. If I want to change translate x on it, I can say set adder, and I say p cube one dot translate x, and I give it the value I want to set it to. In this case, let's set it to a value of two. And if I run this code, you can see that my cube has moved, and the translate x has a value of two. Again, if I modify something here, Maya will tell me in the script editor. So let's set it to a value of 20. And you can see that Maya says it ran a set adder on pq1.translateX, just like we did, and set it to a value of 20. If you ever need more help, Maya has great documentation for the program online. You can go to the help menu and click on learning path or any of the Maya scripting references. In the next video, we'll go over how to store the values returned by these commands inside of variables. If you're interested in learning more about programming inside of Maya, check out my popular Python for Maya course, which is linked in the video description below.